Hello and welcome back to Bioclass Bytes. In this video, we are going to talk about alternative theories on the origin of the universe. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. In this video series, we have the following unit and lesson titles. For this video, we are going to focus on alternative theories on the origin of the universe. This video is actually a continuation of our previous video, The Formation of the Universe, in which we focused on the Big Bang Theory. But for this video, we will look into other theories that possibly explains the origin of the universe, namely the creationist theory, intelligent design theory, the holographic principle, and the steady state theory. The creationist theory or creationism is the belief that the universe and the various forms of life were created by God out of nothing. We are familiar uh, by the book of Genesis chapter 1 that states that everything on this earth and the universe was created by God within six days and on the seventh day he rested. The creationist theory is actually a response to the modern evolutionary theory which explains the emergence and diversity of life without a recourse to the doctrine or of God or any other divine power. There are two types of creationists, the biblical or young earth creationist who believe that the story told in Genesis of God's six-day creation are to be factually correct. Um, Based on, their, based on the computation presented um, of some measurements in the Bible, that would only make the earth around 6,000 to 10,000 years old. That is in direct con uh, contradiction to um, the established age of the earth, which is around 4.5 billion years old. Here in this image is a, a creation, uh, the Creation Museum um, in Pittsburgh, Kentucky. The second type of creationists are earth, old earth creationists, wherein they believe that the creator made everything that exists, but they may not hold that the story of Genesis is factually correct and it's a literal history of that creation. So they believe that the earth is, that the earth is actually quite old, but they still believe that the story um, happened as stated in the Bible. Both types of creationists believe that changes in organisms may involve changes within a species or downward changes such as negative mutation, but they do not believe that any of these changes can lead to evolution. They still believe that everything is created by a, a divine entity or a divine God, and most of the organisms we see right now were created as uh, appeared um, the same as they were created. Mainstream scientists and biologists generally reject creationism. Intelligent design can be considered as an um, outgrowth or offshoot from creationism. Um, what they claim here is that all living things uh, were created in more or less their present forms by an intelligent designer. It means that they could subs they, they subscribe to some scientific concepts such as evolution or um, natural selection, however, still intended by an intelligent designer. Their best analogy is the watchmaker analogy, wherein they state that since a, a watch functions based on it based on its design, it means that someone designed it or someone, an intelligent designer, um, created the watch to begin with. Intelligent design was wi widely perceived as being allied with scientific creationism. Um, but like what I've mentioned, they still subscribe to creationism still fo uh, while following the scientific explanation. The notion that scientific facts can be adduced in support of the divine creation of the various forms of life. So they subscribe to biblical creationism while following or while um, using scientific facts and evidence as their basis. Intelligent design was formulated in the 1990s as an explicit refutation of the theory of bi biological um, evolution advanced by Charles Darwin. One of the most uh, prominent um, movers of intelligent design was William Paley, an English Anglican priest, philosopher, and author, author of influential works on Christianity, ethics, and science. So William Paley and his supporters of intelligent design observed that the functional parts of, and systems of living organisms are irreducibly complex, meaning that they cannot exist without a designer because they cannot be removed without causing the whole system to cease function. It means that every organism is placed there for a purpose and every part of a body is placed there for, for a purpose, possibly by an intelligent designer. 
I recommend that you watch this video from Crash Course um, on Intelligent Design, uh, wherein they focus teleological argument for and against intelligent design. I will provide the link in the description below. Here's another video from uh, from the uh, from YouTube on intelligent design and evolution. Again, I will provide the link in the description below. This one is actually a short version of a debate between Bill Nye and Ken Ham, wherein they talk about Genesis, and I will provide the link on the description below. Here is the actual uh, video of the debate, uh, this, which is quite long. No, it's around uh, two hours and forty-five minutes. Um, again, the link in the description below. And here, one of my favorite uh, biologists, Richard Dawkins, um, wherein he had a debate with other creationists. Um, this is um, found on YouTube, and I will provide the link in the description below. The next alternative theory is the holographic principle. Um, it says that uh, it is a property of quantum gravity theories which resolves the black hole information paradox within string theory. This was, this was first proposed by Gerard Hooft and uh, it was given a more precise string theory interpretation by Leonard Susskind. The principle states that uh, the description of a volume of space should be taught as encoded on a boundary to the region, preferably preferably a light-like boundary like a gravitational horizon. For a black hole, the principle states that the description of all the objects in which will ever fall on its entirety contain in the surface fluctuations of the event horizon. So, to be honest, this is quite a technical uh, physics theory for me and being a biology major, I might be a little bit limited in describing this theory. But as far as I understand, it says that Everything that we see in the universe is actually a, a projection from its source. So, um, some distant two-dimensional surface contains all the data needed to fully describe our world. So, some distant two-dimensional surface, so this is what they're referring to, distant two-dimensional surface is just projecting everything that we see in our 3D world right now. Much like, a holog much like in a hologram, this data is projected into, to appear in three dimensions. So this is what they're trying to say. Uh, similar to the char characters we see on TV, we live on a flat surface that happens, ju that happens just to have um, some depth. So somewhere in the universe, all the information that we need um, is stored and it is just being projected into our own reality. This is another diagram that aims to describe to us the holographic space-time. Um, like what I've mentioned in, um, in the previous slide, I am not really that um, knowledgeable about such deep physics concepts. Um, however, in its essence, what it's trying to say is that um, everything that we see right now are just holograms. Um, one um, example is that um, they also are trying to question reality, wherein is there really an apple on my hand or what I'm feeling right now um, um, on my hand are just information being loaded from this source of um, data. And there, it's just being loaded into my head to visualize a three-dimensional apple on my hand. If you're curious about the holographic principle, I recommend that you watch these videos, recommend, um, recommended videos, and I will provide the links below. What is the holographic principle and is the universe a hologram? Links in the description below. The steady state theory is a view that's actually contradicting to um, the Big Bang theory. It says that the universe has always been expanding while maintaining a constant average density of materials in which matter being continuously created to form new stars and galaxies at the same rate that old ones become un un unobservable as a consequence of their increasing distance and velocity of recession. So let's see here the comparison of Big Bang and steady state. So according to Big Bang, um, there, there used to be a condensed mass of energy that expanded into space. While in steady state, as the space expand, more and more, um, gala uh, more and more matter, more and more galaxies are being created um, on that space. So here, condensed, condensed matter expanding into space. Here, as the space expands, uh, matter is being created. So this uh, is another uh, comparison. So here from Big Bang, 
there used to be a hot condensed initial state and it slowly expands and occupies the expanding space okay so they are quite farther from each other well this one it um, um as the space expand around the around the newly occupied space ma new matter is constantly being created the steady state theory was very popular in 1950s however um, a lot of evidence against it began to emerge um, early in early 1960s um, observations taken with the radio telescopes showed that there were mo there were more radio source sources a long distance away from us that would be predicted uh, by the theory so if you want you could check out this um, website from NASA that explains more uh, the comparison between steady state and the Big Bang theory that ends our video i hope you learned something new don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video till next time goodbye